This video was brought to you by Blinkist, the very cool app that gives you quick summaries of today's hottest nonfiction books. Hello, friends, and happy Halloween 2020. I just thought I would establish the date right off the bat because this will almost certainly be one of the most dated videos I've ever made, given it is about an election that is set to occur in about 52 hours or so. However, if you are watching this video in the future, I hope it will still be useful since we're going to be talking about a truly timeless topic, namely how to predict American presidential elections with 100% accuracy. Now, one of the big legacies of America's 2016 election was that a lot of people lost all faith in the most traditional way to predict election outcomes, which is the polls. A poll is, of course, a random survey of people asking them who they're planning on voting for. This is basically a mid-20th century science, with 1936 usually recognized as the first year that political polling started to be done in America in the style we know today. But polling has never been an exact science, and people have long been skeptical of it, sometimes rightfully so. In the 1948 presidential election, for instance, America's leading polling companies all famously predicted that some mustachioed weirdo named Thomas Dewey would unseat America's beloved Hiroshima bombing president, Harry S. Truman. And when that didn't happen, there was much mockery of pollsters, including by Truman himself. Since 1948, however, American polling has gotten way more sophisticated and accurate. In Truman's time, America only had four polling companies. Today, there are literally hundreds, meaning that during the course of your typical presidential election, there will literally be thousands of polls done. And as a result, over the last few decades, polls have, in fact, remained the best way to predict the basic outcome of a presidential race, at least when one guy is clearly ahead. There are, of course, occasionally elections that pollsters will proclaim too close to call, which is when the two candidates are about equally popular and the science of polling cannot confidently state who is in the lead. All polls have what they call a margin of error, which is the number a pollster confesses his poll might be wrong by. It's usually about two or three percent in either direction. So for example, in the 2000 presidential election, the final polls generally said that George W. Bush was leading Al Gore by maybe two points or so. But that information was ultimately useless because the gap was within the margin of error. Al Gore ultimately won the popular vote, but that didn't mean that the polls were wrong. These days, America has so many polling companies that there is now this thriving world of poll aggregators. They mush together as many polls as they can and spit out some average figure that represents the safe consensus. In 2016, however, all of the poll aggregators were wrong, wrong, wrong. They all concluded with enormous certainty that accused Libyan war criminal Hillary Clinton would easily beat perverted game show host Donald Trump. But of course, that is not what wound up happening. Hillary had substantial leads in a number of critical states that were beyond the margin of error, and yet Trump still managed to beat her there. Now, why the pollsters got the 2016 election so wrong is a complicated topic that involves questions about the science of polling and the degree to which the sample of Americans surveyed by pollsters in 2016 failed to accurately reflect the diversity of the country, which is always a challenge in somewhere as big as the United States. But the pollsters claim to have learned their lesson, and we are told that their 2020 numbers are much more trustworthy. And according to the 2020 poll aggregators, their baseline prediction is that Trump will lose. Most pollsters give Watergate-era lawmaker Joseph R. Biden Jr. a lead both nationally and in the so-called swing states of the Electoral College that is comfortably outside of the margin of error. But you know, the shadows of 2016 still loom large, and I can understand why a lot of people would not be inclined to take any of this stuff seriously. So the question becomes, is there a way to predict a presidential election that has a higher degree of certainty than the crummy old polls? So there are a few people who claim to have dreamed up some eccentric system for predicting presidential election winners with 100% certainty. This is a guy named Ray Fair. He is a professor of economics at Yale. In 1980, he came up with this algebraic formula that uses various stats about the US economy to predict how presidential elections will go. And it has picked the correct winner. The last 10 presidential elections 
in a row. Now, since COVID has devastated the US economy, Dr. Fair's model would ordinarily predict that President Trump is doomed, but Dr. Fair has lived up to his name and conceded that his formula wasn't based on crazy things like pandemics happening and thus shouldn't be used to predict 2020. But luckily, we also have some less modest academics on hand, men like Professor Helmut Norputh, who has been on Fox News a lot lately because his rival formula, which is based on extrapolating general election results from presidential primaries, says that President Trump has a 91% chance of winning re-election. And we have to listen to Professor Norputh because he has successfully predicted the last four elections. Wait, that's not impressive. Norputh would probably prefer for me to say that he has correctly predicted five of the last six elections. And if you apply his formula retroactively, he says it would have correctly predicted 25 out of the last 27 elections. But still, we are trying to look for 100% accuracy here. Okay, so here is Professor Alan Lickman, another academic who's been getting a lot of media attention recently. His gimmicky prediction formula slash wannabe bestseller is called the 13 Keys. It assesses candidates based on four political variables, seven performance variables, and two personality variables. And based on this system, it is Biden who supposedly has a lock on 2020. And unlike Dr. Norputh's measly four correct predictions, Dr. Lickman has a much more impressive track record of correctly predicting the last, wait, four as well? Both Dr. Norputh and Dr. Lickman got screwed up by the 2000 election, which is about as close as we've ever gotten to a tie in modern times. That election also resulted in a president who won the White House, but lost the popular vote, which is something that hadn't happened in over a hundred years. So it was a bit of a black swan event and Maybe we can cut them some slack. What the two professors want to get credit for, however, is correctly predicting the other great black swan event of our time, namely Donald Trump's surprise 2016 victory. But which one of these two overconfident eggheads will escape 2020 with their reputation intact? Only one predictive model will survive. Another theory that has become quite popular in recent years is this idea that the betting markets can predict presidential elections more accurately than pollsters or even self-promoting academics. The logic is that when you bet on an outcome, you have a financial incentive to be right, which makes it less likely that you will let your irrational personal biases take over, in theory. Anyway, there are all sorts of places where you can bet on elections these days, but the gold standard has always been something called the Iowa Electronic Market, or IEM. This was a betting house that was established in 1988, explicitly for presidential elections, and its betting odds have indeed predicted the winner of every election since 1988. Or at least the popular vote winner. This is something you always have to keep a close eye on when it comes to election prediction stuff in the US. Since it's possible for a candidate to win more votes than his opponent, but not win the White House due to the way the Electoral College works, Predicting who will win an election can be a little bit weaselly. Right now, the IEM predicts that Biden will win the popular vote, just as it predicted Hillary Clinton would win the popular vote in 2016. But this doesn't necessarily tell you all that much about who the next president will be, since much like George W. Bush, Donald Trump was also elected without winning the popular vote. No, for hard predictions on who will actually wind up president, we must turn to the spooky world of correlative portents. These are various random phenomena that just happen to always correlate perfectly with who's gonna win the election. So for example, for a long time, there was a famous portent associated with the Washington uh, football team. If Washington won their final home game before the election, so too would the party that currently held the White House. This held true for 17 straight elections in a row, from 1936 to 2000. But then Washington lost in 2004, the same year that George W. Bush was reelected. So that was the end of that. A sports related correlation with a completely 100% unbroken track record, however, is the Olympic portent. So in a fun coincidence, the Summer Olympics always happen in the same year as a US presidential election. And at some point, someone noted another fun coincidence. If the Olympics are hosted by a city that's already hosted before, then the incumbent White House party wins. So for instance, in 2012, the Olympics were held in London, 
a city that had hosted the Olympics before. This meant that incumbent Democrat President Barack Obama was predicted to win a second term, which he did. In 2016, however, the games were hosted in Rio, a city that had never hosted the games before, which meant that the non-White House party was assumed to win, and of course they did. This trick has apparently been accurate for eight elections in a row since 1988. But 2020 being what it is, this year the tradition may have been broken beyond repair. On the one hand, the city of Tokyo won the bid to host the 2020 Olympics. And since Tokyo is a city that has hosted before, this should predict Trump winning a second term. However, as we all know, the Tokyo Olympics also wound up getting canceled because of COVID. So I don't know if that means they count or not. Regardless of how the election turns out, you could make a persuasive argument that the prediction still holds up, but that's not much use to us now. The next thing is the Halloween mask index, which has supposedly called every election since 1980. According to this, the presidential winner is whoever Americans buy more Halloween masks of that year. Different organizations have assumed the mantle of America's official mask sales counter over the years. In 2016, it was the spirit Halloween people who are the biggest American Halloween costume chain at the moment. Hey JJ, can you give me an update for the mask sales of this year? Uh, well, according to the anecdotal data at least, it looks like Trump won in the mask sales. I mean, I guess that's really not surprising. Has there ever been a president more costumable than Donald Trump? If Trump doesn't win, you could imagine this being the excuse that everyone will use. Oh, that's just because he was the easier costume. It's not actually because he was more popular. Now on election night itself, there are a few proven ways to quickly predict the winner based on how certain states vote. Not in the sense that like, oh, this is an important state because it has this many electoral votes or whatever. No, I mean like in the random way that some states just always coincidentally vote for the winning party. The most magical state in this regard is Ohio, which has voted for the winning president in every election since 1964. And if we want to get even more narrow, no Republican candidate has won the presidency without winning Ohio in 160 years. Again, this doesn't actually mean anything politically, since obviously very little about politics, let alone Republican politics is the same now as it was in 1860. It's just a wild fluke. Based on current polls, the Ohio portent is good news for Trump, since he is currently leading there at the moment. If Biden wins without Ohio, meanwhile, it would mark the death of the longest running arbitrary presidential predictor in all of American history. Regardless of what you think about Trump, that would be a little sad. Now, 2020 has been a uh, colorful year, full of all sorts of exciting characters and events we've been told to care about. But caring about things takes time, and I bet you wish there was a shortcut. And that's where today's video sponsor, Blinkist, comes in. Blinkist is an awesome app for the phone and computer that gives you access to hundreds of condensed summaries of popular non-fiction books, either in written form or podcast style. So say you want to learn more about the philosophy of Mr. Nate Silver, the most famous and trustworthy of America's poll aggregators. Why not read or listen to the Blinkist summary of his famous 2012 manifesto, The Signal and the Noise. With the power of Blinkist, getting the gist will only take about 15 minutes. Or how about 2020 breakout political star Andrew Yang? They've got his very excellent book, The War on Normal People in Blinkist 2. Or how about a biography of the late justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg? Or that book about systemic racism by Robin D'Angelo that everyone seems to have an opinion on? Well, just listen to the Blinkist summary and you can have an opinion too. In all seriousness, Blinkist is a very useful app that I use quite a bit, and I'm sure you will too. If you're interested in giving it a try, just click on the link in the thing below and try it for free for a week. And if you dig it, you can get 25% off the full price of membership and start fitting learning into your life. All right, so that's the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh yes, and for the big election on Tuesday, I will be doing another one of my famous all day live streams. So check it out and keep me company as we watch the most important election of our lifetimes, just like all of the other ones. See you all soon.